Fresh meat. Season four is going to be the biggest update we have ever made to Diablo 4 since it has launched. Our focus on Season 4 is to really make a lot of evergreen updates to the core systems of Diablo 4. In Season 4, we're ramping the intensity across the seasonal and eternal realms through a collection of new activities aimed at ensuring the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay experience is as exciting and rewarding when Hal comes to Sanctuary. Season four item changes are some of the biggest changes we've made to Diablo 4 thus far. We've never done anything like this. We are fundamentally changing how you engage with items, how you upgrade them, and along the way, solving a lot of things that we've seen continually from our community, that we agree with our pain points of our existing item system right now. So in this new itemization system, we're focusing on narrowing down the scope of the base affixes. They're going to be a lot simpler, they're gonna be fewer in number, so you can much more easily parse whether this item is useful for you, and if it is, then you can take it and further upgrade it and customize it to your own specific build. Tempering is a new system that allows you to really customize the gear that you find. In order to temper, you yeah, need to go to the blacksmith be available, and then uh, choose the recipe yeah, that you October wish to temper from, 8. and then a random affix from that recipe will be attached onto your gear. Tempering recipes can be found from almost all of the content throughout sanctuaries. So you will actually be looking for tempering recipes that go directly with what you're envisioning. Maybe you're thinking, I'm gonna play a frost sorceress. There are also going to be recipes that are more generic and maybe are just generally good yep. for the sorceress, but they you'll be able to it. choose which one Life you think is gonna so be most better. powerful with the build you're making for your class. It's good, busy. We're making a pretty radical change to the Codex of Power in this season, based again on the feedback that has been coming from our players. Now, every single legendary in the game will be entered into your Codex of Power so that you can continually imprint the best possible version of that legendary onto your gear. So going forward, there will no longer but be carrying all around all of these existed. asset crystals in your inventory. It's all gonna be in the Codex of Power. So part of the final system that we have is going to be greater affixes. What's a greater affix? Well, we wanna keep it compelling that there are some drops that are even better than the others when you're trying to get the perfect We've build been asking for that affix system because since this, launch. In World Tier 4, <laughs> and only in World Tier 4, when an ancestral legendary item drops, there's a chance the affixes on it can roll as greater affixes. These will roll with bigger values that are normally available for that affix. Greater affixes are fairly rare, but they're not impossible to find. While leveling up, you're gonna be able to find upgrades much more easily with this new system. 
another part of itemization is going to be masterworking. Now, this is something really intended for that very high end game. Again, world tier four. This is where a player is going to take an item, already has the affixes that they want on it, but now they go through a process of upgrading those affixes, getting even higher values on them. Masterworking really starts at level 100. Once you've already completed your build and found some of the best items, you're going to be able to test your build against the powerful well, why enemies are they of talking the pit. about all this old stuff? Like the pit is a new endgame this. system that has been added in this season that is going to challenge players that feel that they have is this the largely for maximized like people their who build. Played season By pushing yet? into more difficult yeah, like, tiers of the pit, you're going to be able to unlock rarer no crafting materials to masterwork your gear even further. You're going to have to play some Usually of the hardest start off content like in the game. But once you do, if you're successful, you can go and make it's those It's all old and pretty strong. sure. In season four, we're ramping the intensity of the Helltides through the inclusion of a variety of new activities. The first of which is a doubling down and rise of the cultists' presence throughout the tide. You're going to be running through the Helltide, seeing the cultists just conjuring up swarms, swarms of demons, adding to that yeah. sense of manic and chaos that you know they're pretty well known for. The other archetype that we're adding is the presence of the Doomsayers, who I'm about to, I'm about to jump on another caught out in the thing, Tide and who would be basically the just same thing. lost their minds to all of the mania going on around them. And lastly, rounding out the new activities are just yeah, the inclusion yo. of the Iron Wolves. They're finally joining the is. fight. They could no longer stand in the sidelines seeing the Hell Tides and Hell's forces intensify their assault on Sanctuary. As season four players engage and progress through the Call of the Wolves seasonal activity, they'll earn honor with the Iron Wolves, unlocking access to a vast assortment of rewards to accompany and empower yo, SW, your season four journeys. In the updated Helltide, for players who are able to stay alive long enough, they'll be paid a visit by the Hellborn, former heroes of Sanctuary yeah, who have recap. aligned this with is... the forces of Hell to attack the allies they once aligned with. Players who are able to take down the Hellborn will be acquiring the materials they need to engage Legit with had me questioning the new everything Helltide I ever do, bro. I'm like, yo, rituals. why are we on Located this in the Helltide, month old recap, bro? Like, pretty much just a botched rituals from the cultists that players will be all this crap is, starting for themselves is, uh, recap. drawing the intention but the new of stuff all the is about to come on once they're done with the recap. all out battle one of my favorite themes for these ambushes is the hellworm it's literally a giant hell slug beast that emerges from the ground and it spews out a whole bunch of mobs at you if you're able to survive that you'll be paid a visit from the but Blood this is Maiden, what's new right now brand new helltide mini boss like, and one of the ultimate this challenges is in the new experience four. But this so was I think I'm actually about the most and excited about this season because of what you're able to do with your old characters, how they can integrate with this new item game and take them to new levels of power with this system. I think that the best part of this update is that you're going to be really empowered to build the character that you want to play. You're going to be able to pick custom affixes. What they meant was character. you're going to be able to choose new and Bash, ways. Barb, and Sword. That's what they really meant. Happy Friday, Super Diablo community. Friday. Welcome to another Diablo 4 campfire chat. Uh, I am Adam Fletcher. I'm joined here by a very familiar face, Mr. Adam Jackson. Hello, hello. The Adams have invaded. We We've did taken it. We over. Won. We have taken over. We actually are joined by one additional person, and this person is uh, tuning in, patching in. I'm not, I don't phoning know what the phoning in. I don't know. know. From, from Albany, Blizzard Albany, and that's Mr. Dan Tangway. Dan, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure thing. Hi, I'm Dan Tangway, and I'm uh, one of the lead seasons designers for Diablo 4. And yeah, we've got a lot of exciting stuff to share with you. Awesome. Great to hear from Dan. Oh, no. Dan is yeah. kind of like melting in Albany. I believe it's very, very warm up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually warmer there than California, which is kind of oh, crazy. Uh, but it is, uh, yeah. look at this. Adam and Adam. Ooh, I love it. We did no it. No more Joes. Where, where, yeah, we no more it. Joes. Where, where's... 
Joe Pipora, not here. Uh -huh. He's actually on vacation, so that's the yeah. that's the reason why he's not here. But we have a lot to talk about today. We are actually going to be talking about uh, season five in the mm -hmm. PTR, um, and we do want to like you know, there's been a lot going on with Diablo Four over the it last sure couple has. months. Yeah. Obviously, season four is launched. Uh, we had our mid-season update uh, last mm -hmm. week. We we introduced pets. Uh, yeah, which is really cool. Um, just pets, no yeah. one expected it, but we at, we did introduce pets within season four. Um, and at the same time, we also uh, had our release date announcement for Vessel of Hatred, sure did. which is news. October 8th. Yep. So lots and lots and lots of cool stuff that's going on with uh, Diablo 4. And we have more to share today, but uh, of course, with PTR, we do need to talk like a little bit of the housekeeping stuff mm. to make sure that players are aware of it and, and when it's going to start. Um, currently, uh, we have uh, Season 5 PTR actually starting next Tuesday, and that is on the 25th. It will run for one week, similar yeah. to the Season 4 PTR. It is PC Battle.net only again. Uh, yeah. It is just easier for us to be able to get builds up and get things out and get feedback I in really quickly uh, when we have it on uh, PC Battle.net. So uh, that will be going live next Tuesday. Everything that we're talking about today uh, will be in a blog that will go live after the stream, Perfect. as well as uh, patch notes will be going live after the stream, and they're pretty pretty beefy in in themselves. I can't wait or to see that. I don't know. It's Friday, you guys. It's it's uh, we we haven't done a Friday stream, and I don't know. It's been a while. It's been a a long while. Uh, for, for feedback, though, uh, we will be opening up our PTR forums on the, uh, uh, for players to actually be able to submit feedback. So uh, the Diablo 4 forums will have a special section for PTR. And then separately, uh, if you do want to leave feedback on other avenues, such as like Reddit or um, the Community Sanctuary Discord, places like that, we most definitely end up like combing through all the different yep. various uh, uh, ways of players being able to provide feedback uh, specifically from that end. Um, for this PTR, we will note that um, this one will be a little different than Season 4 in regards to how you can start off characters. There will still be character boosts, like what we had with uh, the Season 4 PTR. I believe it's actually moved to a different city. I uh, can't recall. I, I think we had it in Kyovashad before, and I believe it's in a different city, and I don't I recall uh, where, <laughs> which city it is. It's in the blog, though. Um, but uh, uh, all that information will be there after the stream. Separately, uh, we did incorporate a character copy feature, yep. but we initiated this character copy already. No one knows this, but as of yesterday, characters were copied from your accounts over to PTR. So um, it gives you a little bit of variety of being able to take over some of those characters that you've already built out. Uh, or, you know, if you want to, you can still use the character boost. Yep. I will note, uh, we do want players to be experiencing it in, in like a variety of ways, like whether using your other your your current characters that we're copying over, or if you're using some of the character boosts, we do recommend. Um, or if you want to level up level, level one, to, like yeah. that's that's a, another option as well. It allows us to get feedback from all different aspects, so we do recommend uh, you know, trying it out in different one, ways and providing and feedback it. of like how things feel, how things uh, flow within um, the PTR itself. So that is all kind of like the general housekeeping notes that we do have. Oh, and I will say that I believe we actually did we did correct that Codex of Power reset thing as well. Oh, okay. So yeah, <laughs> I remember that was that was uh, uh, plaguing some people yeah. uh, last season. We did correct Holy that, so I won't up. reset. I believe every single time you end up like creating a new character, or boosting a new character. I believe, um, and then separately on the forums, we will have a known issues list. Because uh, they're, you know, it's PTR, it's an early build. Yep. Uh, so we want to make sure that people are aware of that. And with PTR, um, you know, when we take in feedback, it's great for, for players to be able to, like, provide all various forms of feedback. I will say by the time uh, Season 5 launches, uh, we will try our best to get as much of that feedback in. Yep. Uh, if it's something that's, like, a massive, like, oh, like, a huge overhaul or something like that, I wouldn't expect it in Season 5, but it is yeah. good to hear that feedback because it might be something that we end up incorporating uh, maybe in the future uh, for, like, a future season from that end. Um, yeah, it's very useful. So but, it totally yeah. helps us drive future decisions and even... We did a lot of reaction to PTR feedback in Season 4. 
if yeah. I remember right. We did like a whole lot on our team at least, and I expect the same for season five. So exactly, it's, send it in. It's very useful. And then one last thing I do want to note is because players have probably seen when season four is ending, which is currently in early August. Uh, you can see that kind of like on on your uh, <clears throat> character select screen when you're you're jumping into the game. Um, I will note that. Season 5 is a little bit shorter of a season than what we've had beforehand. Uh, season 5 itself uh, will run season. until uh, that October 8th date with Vessel of Hatred. Because Vessel of Hatred is actually the start of Season 6. So uh, we, we did want to at least clarify and make test. sure because we've heard a lot of those questions of like, hey, is, so like, we can test out is, season, is, is um, Vessel of Hatred hitting in the middle of Season 5? Things up. like that. So we did want to note that from or that the end. The Vessel but of Hatred. I'm not sure what it's Enough of the housekeeping right notes. Yeah. I know a lot of players want to hear about uh, Season 5 in itself. And so Mr. Dan Tangway from the sweltering uh, <laughs> city the limits of, of, Albany. of Albany will be uh, walking us through uh, season five. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, let's dive into the new features on PTR for season five. Shadow, what's good? Just to give you a little bit of context, you know, we You're did some early brainstorming for season five, and we knew that you know we needed to build up one game. Uh, so in game, you know, money, we've heard y'all that in game is very money, important and. Season four, we added the pit to the end game, and some people have been playing Hell Tides into the end game, but we still want to expand the end game a bit more, right? So, if it's an end game activity, we definitely need something that's rewarding and very replayable. We also wanted to make something with a lot of monsters. I mean, monster <clears> density <throat> and just entering that, that feeling of flow state is really important for players. Uh, we needed something that had stakes, and we wanted players to push their luck. And finally, we really wanted to return to hell. You know, previous Diablo games let you return to hell after you defeat the big boss, but Diablo 4 hadn't done that Checking yet. Out the, uh, and so with all campfire. those goals in mind, let me introduce you to the Infernal Hordes. Now, uh, let me give you a, a quick Infernal summary of what Hordes. the Infernal Hordes is. Uh, it's a wave-based uh, gameplay mode with survivor-like choices in between the waves, and it'll culminate with an all-new boss encounter and then the rewards build on top of itemization 2.0 that came in season four. So now how do you go about confronting the internal hordes? How do you get back to hell? Uh, I think we can queue up some footage and then I'll, I'll talk you through some of the ways you get back to hell. All right, first off, you're gonna unlock, you know, the activity for hell uh, with a brisk eternal quest line starting at world tier three in Zarbenzet. That's where you need to go in the PTR. Now you need a new type of key called a compass, which you can see down in the inventory below here. And like Nightmare Dungeons, the compasses all have a starting monster difficulty and a number of revives. And there are eight levels of difficulty with escalating challenge and rewards. As you can see, it's a very Nightmare Dungeon-like flow here. And then compasses can be upgraded to higher tiers with all new consumables called Abyssal Scrolls. So you'll get a chance to play with all these new features when you're in the PTR. But let's let's really talk about the, the gameplay itself. And I think we've got some footage of the wave-based play that I, we can show off here. Um, first off, gonna have a lot of monsters. Now, <laughs> you have one monster here. This is the start of wave one. And so you defeat this Aether Fiend, and it's gonna drop something called Burning Aether, which is a new currency. Now, this new currency yeah, is PC players can specific play the to hell, and you use it to unlock the spoils of hell at the end of a run. And at the end of each wave, uh, there's going to be what's called the Infernal Offer. So let's get through this wave and we'll take a look at the Infernal Offer. Do we get revives you see the these hardcore? hands reaching out from hell itself and they're tempting yeah, you right. with a choice. You're going to choose the form of your destructor. You're going to pick a boon and a bane that impacts the rest of your run. And so now you've chosen a, a boon and a bane and yeah, that's going to modify the gameplay that comes up next. And so here you're jumping into one of the new activities that also unlocks Aether in this. And this is a Soul Spire. It's pretty Are similar to a Hell Spire that you'd see in Hell Tide. Uh, and you have to kill a number of enemies within that ring in order to be able to earn an Aether. And you can upgrade Soul Spires from the Infernal Offer as well, right. if you like. And then finally, hey, what you need to do is complete the number of waves in order to be able to confront the boss. And so you see in this particular run, uh, you're at five of five waves. 
So you are just about ready once you defeat this wave to go confront uh, the new bosses for the Infernal Hordes. So we'll finish collecting our Aether here, uh, find our last number oh, of yeah. enemies, and I think we're good. I think we're ready to go. So let's take a, a look at our new bosses. I think we've got some cool art to share here. So these are the Fell Council. There are going to be some familiar faces for Diablo 2 players. They are resurrected versions of the council members from Diablo 2. Now, for those of you who didn't play Diablo 2, uh, the council members were former high priests of the Zacharum, and they had uh, promised to basically take care of Mephisto after he'd been trapped in the Soul Stone, and he'd been hidden down and caressed and Trevinkel. And uh, of course, as it happens, <laughs> Mephisto corrupted them, both in mind first and then their bodies. And they became <clears throat> demons who are just zealous and serve him without question. And so uh, we thought it was going to be really cool to be able to resurrect them and bring them back uh, for Diablo 4. And they fit great in hell. Uh, we had to tweak their power sets a little bit uh, to fit the D4 combat system. So we gave them new titles and new looks to really reflect their their combat specialties. Yeah, it's, it's, um, say, it's, it's, it's incredibly yeah. awesome to see uh, these guys come back. You know, it's giving very nostalgic uh, vibes of of doing a bunch of you know endurance of hate runs for for Miss Visto and yeah. doing meth runs and everything it's like that. Exciting. So yeah, it's really awesome to see them back in uh, season five. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Diablo 2 is certainly near and dear to our hearts here out in New York. I want new enemies, and, bro. Uh, yeah, like, that's we're cool, really glad to have them back, and, and we hope to see uh, hopefully more returning make new faces new in the future, dude. too. So let's take a look at that boss encounter now. So uh, I showed you a number of enemies, um, uh, members of the Fell Council here. We've actually built five of them in total, uh, but you're only going to fight three at a time. Now, we keep two in the hopper, basically, and we do that because we want to have a whole bunch of replay associated with this boss fight. And because we're only using three of the five, there's actually ten variations of this boss fight you can fight uh, randomly as you do your infernal run. And so we're going to uh, basically kill them off. And uh, once you defeat one, the fight will actually escalate. Uh, actually, it probably escalates even if you just take down a, a certain amount of health, if I remember correctly. And uh, it escalates, uh, basically their attacks become more powerful, and then they start really getting even more powerful uh, kind of room clearing attacks towards the end. But we've defeated them here, and this is the reward moment I actually wanted to talk through with you, because this is something that really ties into itemization 2.0. You've got several chests here, and you've got a choice of the rewards you get at the end of your infernal run. You can choose from a chest that contains all new legendaries and new uniques. You can choose from a chest that contains all sorts of crafting materials, including master working materials. So you don't need to go to the pit anymore exclusively to get master working materials. Uh, you've got a chest that allows you just to get a whole bunch of That's gold. Nice. I know people out there are really asking for gold and this is gonna be a good source of it. And finally, even though it wasn't shown here, you have a chest that guarantees a single item with a, a greater affix on it. And so we thought we'd want to try this out and see how people respond to it. And we thought it would be pretty exciting. You know, certainly in season four, I'm really trying to get some more greater affixes. So I'd love to have this uh, in season five. Um, so yeah, let's take a closer look at some of the uniques you can farm from the Infernal Horde since we're talking about rewards already. Uh, so we're going to queue up some footage here. So first up, we've got the Basilisk. And so this is going to be a new unique staff for druids. And so when you hit an enemy with a nerf skill, it'll petrify them and deal physical damage. So turning the monsters to stone, always cool. But it's also cool that you can CC your target and boost your initial attack here. So this one's pretty exciting for you druid players out there. All right, next up. We've got the third blade. Now, this is a unique sword uh, for barbarians. This one makes your weapon mastery skills uh, be treated as core skills that cost fury. Even though they deal a little reduced damage, this one's pretty exciting because now you can start making all sorts of new builds that you've never seen before. So we're really interested to see what the community comes up with here. All right, next up. 
We've got the Mordecrux. Now, the Mordecrux is a new unique dagger for Necros. So when you consume a corpse, there's a chance that you'll create a skeletal simulacrum that seeks out enemies. And when it dies, it explodes. So essentially, you're making a skelly bomb (laughs) when you consume the corpses. And so that's just going to seek out targets and explode. I think that'd be pretty handy for my Necro this season. So I'm looking forward to that one too. Next up, we have the Umbercrux. Now, the Umbercrux is a new unique dagger for rogues. So if you use a subterfuge skill, you'll create a totem. And if you hit that totem with an attack, it replicates any of the damage it takes to all nearby enemies. And so it's a great way for essentially replicating and doubling down on the damage that you're dealing in a particular area. All right, next up, we've got the Vox Omnium. Now, the Vox and Omnium PTR is a new info. unique staff for Sorks. And so when you cast a Guys, core skill, it's going to ta- uh, uh, cast an additional like two basic projectiles based on the previous elements used. And so this allows you to really start comboing your core and basic Yo, Wizard, skills together. You. And if you Five decide zone, to have different elements associated with those core and basic skills, now you so can start that's casting almost like fire that one that did the bolts. I mean the fireballs and bouncing. cold all at the same time. So we're pretty excited about that this. That is one pretty too. clean though. And the final one we're gonna share it's out here is actually a new set of boots that's available for all classes. Uh, and these are uh, uh, called Rakanos Wake. And so whenever you use an ability with a cooldown, you'll trigger tr- tr- tongue twister, trigger an explosion <laughs> dealing fire damage. And so really, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to bathe your enemies in flames whenever you use a cooldown skill. So maybe I'm going to dust off my uh, whirlwind barb here and slap them on and see how it does. Um, So yeah, these are some of the uniques and legendaries that are going in uh, to the Infernal Hordes. Uh, I think there are 10 uniques overall and over 20 legendaries that you can farm from the Infernal Hordes. So... Uh, there's going to be a lot to chase down in there. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you, Dan, for like sharing, going through all that stuff. I know with, with players jumping in on PTR, especially for uh, and trying out Infernal Hordes and everything, what's kind of like the, the top things that you really want them to like kind of hone in on, give feedback on, check on uh, for PTR? Yeah, absolutely. We we definitely need feedback on the PTR. It's it's super critical to ensuring that, you know, the infernal hordes and all the rewards feel great for when the season launches. So uh, here are yep, some of the topics dude, that, you know, we can use some That's something they didn't on. address. Uh, first off, you know, you just how is so the infernal hordes gameplay? How do the boons and banes feel? You know, which ones do you like the most or the least? And these are types of things that will help us fine tune that experience. Similarly, you know, how is it acquiring compasses? Do you have too much, too few? How do you feel about upgrading them? You know, that could help us really dial in kind of the access to the Infernal Hordes. Uh, We're also interested in learning how you feel about the difficulty and the gameplay length of the different tiers. Like I said at the top, we've got eight different tiers of difficulty. Based on the and so, system. you know, we have the ability to dial those in a little bit. We want to make sure that players can really replay this over and over again as they push into the end game, much like the pit. And then finally, of course, how are the rewards? You know, which do you like the most or the least? You know, we can certainly make tweaks on the rewards to make sure they're as enticing as possible. Awesome. Yeah. And I know with uh, Infernal Hordes, this is kind of a, this is another alternative because as you mentioned, it, it you can jump into it starting with World Tier 3. So mm-hmm. if you're actually leveling a new character, you can actually jump into Infernal Hordes and you're able to earn like experience. So in here, so you actually have the opportunity of like jumping into Hell Tides if you want to, you can jump or into Infernal Hordes. Hordes yep. uh, when you get to, you know, 85 <laughs> or something like that, you can jump into Pits. Uh, so there's there's now like more uh, or nightmare dungeons, obviously, yeah, when you're update, your uh, you're upgrading your glyphs and everything. So there's a lot of different variety now for being able to kind of uh, level up a character, uh, especially as you're going to that mid to late game uh, uh, phase of your your character's journey, you could say. Yeah. Something else to bring up for the rewards for the Infernal Horde as well that I want <laughs> right, to clarify. Yeah, so uh, up, bro. Dan mentioned about, you know, there's going to be uniques that are there that you can target for. Even if we Hordes. could just do there's one There's actually going to be a group of uniques and legendaries Even if we could that you're only able do to target for in that piece of content. That would still in make Infernal it Hordes. where it's so, more viable than um, You're right also... Now. Kind of similar to how the normal game works, you know, how you can target farm a unique from a boss, but you can find it anywhere else in the world. It's the same way here where you can get these new uniques and legendaries anywhere, 
but you have a better chance, you know, if you're targeting them in the Infernal Hordes. And this is the first time that we're doing this with a group of legendaries they would have to as boost well. The stats we have legendary powers that are actually able to be target farmed to in the Infernal Hordes, um, which is actually something a little bit new to the game. So I just wanted to clarify and that. And in addition to that, build, so we're I, also I adding new uniques like and legendaries either. to the rest of the game as well, in addition to this. Yep. So there's actually a very large group of uniques. I think it's over 50 or something. Yeah, wait, there's over... <laughs> There's over 50 yeah. new uniques and legendaries coming so into season 5. So we have five. a lot coming. <laughs> it's and pretty extensive. A lot more to talk about exactly. there too. Uh, so. yeah, we, yeah, we this was just kind of a small preview of what people are looking at. Uh, I still wouldn't want it on here the and they'll, so. they'll be able to jump in more and I actually check it out on PTR because all of them will be present is. there. And I know Adam is actually going to talk through a few of yeah. more, a few additional ones <laughs> here later, mm -hmm. but uh yeah, Dan, this is awesome. Can't wait for players to jump in. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you uh uh uh, informing and, and kind of providing all the new updates and yeah, everything. It's exciting. Yep. From the the sweltering heat of all. I mean, I'm going to keep bringing it up. <laughs> they canceled school up there. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> like, that's not I'm like, that's absolutely yep. insane. Um, but we will be seeing Dan again here later, uh, especially when we get uh, into Q and A at the end. But uh, Dan, thank you again. Um, I think oh, we're you're welcome. Yeah. Awesome. Appreciate it. And then uh, I think we're going to jump into. A little bit of some balance and class updates yep. with oh boy. Adam Jackson. So nerfing the barb. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, let's get to it. We have a lot to talk about. More barb nerf. Have, yeah. So <laughs> the topics I'm going to be covering today, we've got uh, unique items. We're going to be talking quite a bit about that. We've got some updates to mythic uniques that are very exciting and near and dear to my heart. And then we've got your standard class updates. A lot of stuff coming in season five. Um, one thing to clarify here is that we are going to be uh, releasing the patch notes soon, so I'm not going to be going over every single you know class update because there's a ton of them. Kind of similar to season four, I'm really only going to highlight just like one major thing for each class on the stream today. But you'll be able to see all the things that we're doing um, in the patch notes. There's a lot. So first, uniques. Uh, we have some quality of life updates here, really targeting how you get uniques that um, I'm pretty pumped about to announce here today. So. Uh, you can now target farm uniques from three additional sources. You can target them from Obel vendors, Helltide chests, and Whisper caches. These places where you've always been able to, you know, kind of target farm certain gear slots and not been able to get uniques, and you're wondering, well, why didn't, why couldn't we do that? That stinks. Well, now you can, and it's awesome, and I love it. But how are we targeting? So farm here, um, just to give some more detail into how this works, is. Uh, basically, when you when you open like I'm just gonna use Helltide chest as an example, right? If you want a specific specific unique weapon, let's say, uh, you can just simply target the weapon like Helltide chest, and you'll be able to have a chance to get only unique weapons Season for five, your class uh, from drops those chests. In so when you're targeting a specific thing, you just go to the you know the place that has that slot, whether it's the Obel vendor, the Helltide chest, or the Whisper Cache, and you'll have a chance to get uniques that are targeted for that slot. So it kind of adds, you know, while you're doing your normal grind of, you know, doing the boss ladder, killing the boss, you can also be collecting ovals, doing the Helltides, doing the Whispers, and having a chance to target and get that unique as well from that content. We're talking about uniques, And in addition bro. to that, this is also true for Mythic uniques. Uh, so I'll just give an example here of exactly how this works. Let's say that you want to get, you know, Harlequin Crest, a Shaco, or Andariel's Visage. You don't want to target those Helms. You could be targeting helms from Helltide, targeting helms, and you know when you turn in All your of this was the said already. And every time, if you get Bro, this, a mythic yo. unique, you will get one of those two from that source. Do y'all remember now, season also, two? Now, also to clarify, let's say that you are like targeting gloves for some reason. You know, we don't have any mythic unique gloves yet. Then, if you were to get a mythic unique, you still can. It'll just give you a random one instead, uh, since you know you can't target one in that slot. So, pretty exciting way to. Uh, to target kind of the things that you want while you're farming. Yeah, that's not going to be farming amazing. At all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm I know, really I know, excited. we've heard a lot of players going like, "Hey, you know, we we, we do the the uh, the end game bosses a whole lot. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to, f and and you you can actually find them just in the open world as well. We've actually seen uh, a lot of cases, especially with yeah, this past right. season, so where, where why, players are jumping into Helltide like, and they're that's actually finding thing. them this there. Guy, he must but not now know. it's an additional just uh, or additional options for players, which I think will be a lot better for for just overall finding some of the gear. That everyone As really someone wants. who, for the last three seasons, my uniques have always come from the Beast and Ice, I am very selfishly invested in getting yes. this into the game. Yes. So. so, all right, let's talk about uh, other unique updates here. Uh, we're going to be making a whole lot of updates to our unique items, so I'm going to be covering a lot today. Um, we've heard feed your feedback, and we're going to be doing some updates here. 
Um, to clarify before I go into what the updates are, uh, you good. are going to be seeing these updates. I could swear that to, like, was the way that we think about change. and our philosophy around uniques and how they work. You're going to be seeing them on the PTR for the new uniques coming into Season 5. Uh, between the PTR and the launch, you'll be seeing in the Season 5 launch these updates to all the existing uniques in the game. So when Season 5 comes out, basically all the uniques will get these updates that I'm about to talk about. But in the PTR, you're only going to really see this in the new uniques coming into the game. Yeah, there. Now we can go on to the next part. All right, so the, the team's been talking a lot. Um, as many of you probably know, in Season 4, when we did Optimization 2.0, we didn't really update the uniques almost at all in the game, right? We didn't do, like, a big pass to, like, cover how they exist in tempering or anything like that. So the team's Ubers been talking a lot about, you know, what is the role of uniques in Diablo 4? Like, how are exactly, they different from legendary ben. items? Because they're kind of similar in that they both give you, you know, a legendary power that's crazy. really strong. Um, but how are they different, and what do we want them to be long-term? Um, and we've kind of landed on a few things here that I'm going to talk I think about. They, the first they one is they're powerful talking. and exciting items that kind of direct players Because he build, just lied. Right? He so does not play Imagine Diablo. your Fireball Sork. You know, we've got two <laughs> uniques for you. They really target Bro, you. Get you. You're going to feel a lot better playing with Fireball times. when you take them. Uh, you know, we want you to take these things and kind of level up your build. There are moments of, like, very large incremental power where you feel like you're, you know, filling in and your you fantasy as a Ubers. class. Um, the next one is that they're kind of pick up and play, right? They're Whispers easy to evaluate. Moving. The moment that you pick up the For unique, you know, you know whether it's a good one or a bad one. We want this to be a little bit different from legendary powers where, you know, you pick it up and you kind of go on a journey where, you know, you make it into something that's really good. A unique, you know when you pick it up whether or not it's one that you want to keep or one that you don't. And then the last one, uh, pretty obvious but is worth saying, you know, they're kind of more rare chase items that players don't see very often, you know. When you're going through the end game, you're seeing legendary powers a lot because, you know, we have a lot of reasons to give you a lot of them. You want to upgrade your codex. They are the way that you can, you know, get greater affixes and, and temper and masterwork them. So there's a reason why you want to churn and look through a lot of them. Uniques, you do want to get a good one, obviously, but not nearly as often as like a legendary power. We don't need that, that aspect of their design. So they are more rare. They're harder to get. But when you get it, it's kind of like a more exciting moment. Like, did I get the perfect one? And then if not, you go and try and get the next one. So uh, let's talk a little about our goals for the update that we're going to be doing here. Um, one of the things that we come to a lot that we talk about on the team is this idea. We, I like this quote of like players build their legendaries and players build around their uniques, right? Yo, your I legendary think they got power the is, is very, or your legendary items right are very now. malleable. And you know, the moment lost, you get it, bro. you don't know yet if it's going to be the best in slot item, but it has a chance to be. Um, but they're also like able to fit in a lot of different ways. You can manipulate your, their stats via you know enchanting, via tempering. Um, and master working, and so there's a lot that you can do with the item once you've gotten it. Whereas uniques, they're a lot more static, right? The, the stats on them can't change, you can't really manipulate them very much, and sometimes they have maybe qualities to them or stats that are a little bit inconvenient, and you gotta figure out, like, how do I overcome this, this, uh, this little detriment or make my build into where it's a plus instead of a detriment, right? Like, it's a Yo, fixed thing up. that you have to build around, which is very different than a legendary. Um, also, ideally, we want players to run two to four uniques in their build. You know, two to one four of the, uh, the uniques. difficult parts of this, and I think we're going to be continuing to work on with the balance Bro, and design. Bro, uniques, uniques are so that, trash. Nobody you know, would want ever you to have run four some, uniques, but we don't want you to run all of them in your build. Right? <laughs> it's very easy to go one way or the other. I can very easily make you run no uniques, and I can very easily make you run like every <laughs> slot is a unique by making them really, really crazy. Right? Um, we want these to fit in such a way that you're running some of them, the ones that are applicable to your build, or maybe some spicy ones here or there that you try and, you know, like if make it a special way to work with you. Out of uniques, um, but not all of them. I would say right now, like on live in season four, players are running more like zero to Chat, two what in do you their guys build. Think, so it's man. not as much as we want, which means that we want to update them what to make them a little bit more attractive. <laughs> When I'm saying you would run two or And four another one is we kind of want to move away from these generic fits all build styles of uniques, right? Um, one thing that I know a lot of players have talked about in the past that we've had is that some of our uniques are just so generically good. And this is particularly uh, scary for us when it's like what we call a generic unique, which is when we're yeah, every this class guy hasn't can use played it. Since the and so like if every class can use it and release. every build can use it and it's better than like the build specific or class specific stuff, don't even get stuff, ran, bro. Then it just becomes best in slot for everybody right. and we've taken no, away your agency and your choice. Because you're just going to target this item and, and ignore everything else, right? The only items Can't in the game wait that to we get really my want to, to fit gloves. that role are like mythic uniques, where they're across all classes and they're so good, but they're also extremely rare. So you're very excited yeah, to I'm see positive. them whenever you the see one. But all the other regular uniques, we don't want to fit that design space. 
So we're going to be trying to move away from and these that's ones an Uber. and, yep. and readjust was the them and redesign them a little bit where they fit into all kinds item. of builds and, and kind of target now, that's something that they're the best really thing to good at or that's a little bit more unique about them on your class. and make them really good at that and less generically good at everything. It's funny because everyone's in the chat going like, Oh, rip Shaco, rip Shaco! But we just literally, <laughs> yeah, we just, we just said. No, Mythics is in, not what I'm. They're yeah. a different beast here. I'm yeah. talking about all your regular ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaco's still gonna be just <laughs> as good, if not better, honestly. All right, so enough preamble. Right, all right, let's see what they're doing? doing. So we're gonna be doing two big updates to Uniques. The first one is we're gonna be increasing the upper power of the Unique effects and the roll range. Um, we're gonna be doing a, increasing the range from an average of ten to twenty rolls, which I'll explain in a second. And then we're also going to be increasing the upper power of like how much you can get from the rolls. This is really just buffing pretty much most uniques across the board to compete so the with the new world the of same. legendary powers so that, that we live in work. since you know, they got extra ju power juice to them. Now uniques are catching up. So as an example here I gave, you know, if an older unique like one on this live is, that's, gave that's you around 40 to 80 percent multiplicative damage, that's going to go up to like 40, 100, maybe 120, Start maybe even higher. 60. Really the mandate is as high as we can get away with uh, without breaking things. Um, and then we're also going to be increasing the roll range. This is like the number of possible rolls it can do from an average of 10 to 20. So it'll be a little bit harder to get basically, what we're targeting here is the discrepancy of inside of a unique is a little bit wider, where that's, that's the terrible. difference of like a low roll and a high roll is a little bit bigger, but Everyone's the high rolls have are way better than uniques. they were before. So they're more exciting people when are gonna you get be them spending really billions good, of gold um, but it's a little bit harder to get half there. Half decent ones. And the next one is going to be updating the affixes, the actual stats on the uniques. Um, we're doing a pass on all of them, and this is kind of what we're doing. The first thing is we're changing their stats to fit with the Season 4 updates, right? Okay. We're doing the things like we did before of simplifying now, stats, you know, now this is getting rid of sense. super conditional things, making them just more generically uh, understood and good. We're also going to be adding tempering stats. We're open to really adding whatever we want that makes the unique fit That's the all fantasy. We needed. So as an example here, you know, a lot of two-hand weapon uniques have a problem where they're all basically competing against bonus projectiles as an affix because you can just temper that onto your weapons, right? So when it comes to those kind of situations, we'll just slap the bonus projectiles on that unique and now, you know, it's no longer competing in that way where we have to kind of dance around it. We can just put it. We're also open to the idea, by the way, of breaking slot restrictions, kind of like we did in Season 2. So you can have bonus projectiles or other things on other slots, you know, like uniques are, are where we get to play a little bit and just really make something thematic and cool and build defining, and so they have less restrictions than everything else. And the other one is we're updating the stat power levels and the effects. So the idea here that we're thinking, and this is particularly nuancy when it comes to generic uniques, but um, stats that kind of fit the theme or the, the, the fantasy of the unique okay, were, not gonna are going to be like way here. stronger than your normal this stats. This actually right? makes so more, example, way more sense So as an example, if you have a unique now. that's targeting fire damage, maybe it's like a meteor or firewall and the sorcerer, whatever it may be, you know, that plus fire damage can be juiced up to be really, really high. But stats that are more, like, generically good, like, you know, I don't know, attack speed, max life, resist all, um, those ones aren't going to be juiced unless it fits the theme of the unique really well. Right, so we have an example here of one that has been a problem for us in the past. I kind of want to go through Tibbets how we would think will. about it. Trash. I'm not going to say exactly what we're going to do Hardcore, here to Tibalt's Will, but kind of give you our thought process, right? So Tobolt's Will, uh, as you, many of you know in previous seasons, was kind of a problem where it just became best in slot for almost every build. Um, you know, the, the famous line we say is that it was you know, damage on pants, which was you know, impossible <laughs> to get almost anywhere else in the game. And it turned out damage on pants was really, really good, right? Um, it also gave you damage reduction, one of the best stats in the game. Um, and then it also gave you a bunch of, it also sold resource in many ways for you as well, right? It gave you a bunch of resource whenever you became unstoppable, which wasn't too hard to do. Um, so it was doing a lot of things at once. It gave you a you know, very unique effect with putting damage on a slot that you don't get it. It also gave you resource, which is something that every class wants you know, very heavily. And Adam, it gave you three extra potions. No, heart and three <laughs> extra <laughs> potions, yes. Now that one, yeah, that's all right. Um, but yeah, so you know, the way that we would tackle this one, to give you an idea, is like, you know, the, the, we either would kind of pick, you know, do we want to focus this on the, the damage aspect, that it's damage on a non-damaged slot? Or maybe we focus on the resource aspect and like double down on that and make that really powerful Nobody and really wants the cool. Resource aspect um, or we do like a little bit of both, but if we do both, then it's not going to give you the defenses that another pants slot would give, right? Basically, in our mind, we'd be like, we want to get to give the minimum amount of defense where it's not just like a trash item because it has nothing. But then after that, not so much. And you're going to have to solve your defenses in other slots or somewhere Bro, else to justify getting playing. the damage on this slot is how we would think about it, right? And so we're having a lot of conversations now. I don't think we're going to nail every single item perfectly in this first pass. 
Um, so we're really looking for feedback when you you know jump into season five and beyond. Um, and Don't we'll worry, be I got that. you. On but I kind of want to give you an idea of what we're doing Long and kind of story. what we're thinking and targeting with this. Yeah, I think we can move on. So Mythic Uniques uh, are getting a facelift here. So I like that. lots of updates here. Mythic Uniques are now going to be truly mythic. They're getting a new color beam when they drop on the ground. They're coming out with an awesome new sound that you're going to hear in a little bit. We've got new item UI that you can see, so they have a different color. Um, they really are going to look and feel like the, the special items that they are. And we have a video here to show you the sound and what it looks like on the ground. So you can see here this beam looks you know very different than anything else. Isn't that sound, that echoey sound? No, I'm I cool love with it. that. I like sounds that. Sounds like a. I don't know. It sounds like a, you're murdering a bunch of like church organs or something <laughs> like that. It's just like crazy. Yeah. But yeah, so you know, when this thing drops, you're definitely going to know when you got one. No more like sifting through your uniques to see if it's actually one of the mythics. Uh, you'll know right away. So we're really excited about this. Super happy it was able to get in. All right, and last but not least, let's talk about class updates. So I'm going to cover some generic things across all classes and then go through Make a little bit of each great one. Again. again, this is not going to be nearly close to everything that we're doing, just a little taste, a teaser Sorry, guys, for what you can barb. expect to see. I don't know, I don't know what to say. Let's start with things across all classes. Um, one systemic update we're doing to the game is invulnerability skills are now going to start their cooldown they when the invulnerability that, ends instead of when shield. the skill begins. Um, this is really to prevent things like infinite invulnerability and really to open up design space for us on the team because now we can be more comfortable adding things like, you know, invulnerable duration to skills or, or cooldown reduction stun? more liberally and things like that where That's we don't crazy. have to worry about this. Um, this is very similar to like, you know, what our previous games have done and some other games do and we, we think it'll be a good fit here. The idea isn't really to like make it that you can't be invulnerable very often. It's just to prevent like 100% uptime where you actually break down the combat of the game and you're not sense. interacting with enemies anymore. Uh, the next one is we reviewed monster CC and we generally reduced the CC duration and frequency across the board. So, you know, if you were frustrated God, by getting bro. frozen for a million years and then Especially dying, with no death uh, potion that'll happen much hardcore. less often. And also to help with this, uh, potions can be used while CC'd, even while you're stunned. So, you know, while you're frozen standing there and everybody's around you trying to kill you, you can at least spam potion a little bit and maybe survive sometimes. Yo, that honestly helps big time on hardcore. Uh, next one, we've got some bug fixes. Uh, these are some of the notable ones. We do have more coming in. <laughs> Heart these Seeker, Rogue, call Rip. Out. Uh, Rogue Victimize is no longer going to be double dipping on its damage, which is resulting in a, a lot more multiplicative or a lot more damage, really, than it was supposed to have. Uh, damage over time effects were getting double the amount of uh, percent damage uh, that they were supposed to. And Skeleton Reapers were getting both Book of the Dead bonuses when the second option was selected. Uh, and again, this is, you know, just a little bit of a preview, but we have other bug fixes coming, but these are some of the bigger ones we want to call out. Yo, patch notes right, will be out right the after the classes. This last so year. Barbarian, uh, they have a new unique coming in. This oh, is God. the Unbroken Chain. This is for you uh, support Still Barbarians grass. or really just more defensively oriented ones. Um, basically, what this is going to do is create a connection between Steel Grasp and Iron Maelstrom, where you'll be able to cast Iron Maelstrom a lot more often as you use Steel Grasp. And also, uh, enemies damaged by Iron Maelstrom are going to be doing uh, less damage for a little while. So the idea here is, you know, you could debuff enemies, debuff those bosses. So and are they make getting us ready for, for, for raids, for real? Better. And next, the Rogue. This, uh, uh, Flurry is going to be getting a lot of big updates. We updated uh, the Enhancement and both of their upgrades. So uh, you'll be able to see kind of a theme here going on. Uh, before, you know, you, you would uh, damage a crowd control or vulnerable enemy for the enhancement, then you would heal. Now when Flurry hits an enemy, you can just make them vulnerable. So actually Flurry becomes a vulnerable generator here, which is pretty exciting. And That's it'll crazy. also deal more damage as you hit vulnerable enemies. Uh, stacks up really high. So the idea here is with Flurry builds, you want to make everything vulnerable and then just keep whacking them with Flurry and gain a bunch of damage. And now improved flurry is changing. Before it was about vulnerable spreading, but now baseline you can just generate vulnerable, so we don't need that anymore. So now improved flurry is going to actually give you a dash. So now similar to uh, things like the shred on the druid, um, you can kind of dash to your target, and also every time you cast flurry, now it's going to heal you. So it's going to be a lot more mobile, uh, a lot more awesome. Very cool. And then last but not least, to compete with a dash, what could we do with advanced flurry? Well, we can just add a stupid amount of damage and resource cost reduction. <laughs> so before, you know, you had to evade through an enemy and then do damage with one cast and stun enemies. Now, as you spam Flurry, it'll basically get a big damage bonus and its energy cost will go down, which will let you be able to spam it even more often. So the idea here is you just want to be using it over and over and over again, and it'll get stronger and stronger and ramp up pretty heavily. No nerfs so far.
I'm excited for Flurry Rogues. Yeah, very Flurry, excited. Yeah, Flurry they're going to be like little hummingbirds around, bouncing around, and it's going to be great. Yeah, ironically, I'm playing Flurry this season, so you know, I'm always <laughs> off by one. Like I always play the thing, and then like, oh, we're going to massively make it better next time. But you know, guys, do we fine. go over the it's patch fine. notes when fine. this is done? Um, next, Druid uh, Shepherd's Aspect. We've gotten feedback from players now for a while now about how you know Shepherd's Aspect kind of dominates the meta for Druids because you're basically both. It's both not great from a design and a balance perspective. On the design side, you know, we're telling you to put companions on your bar, and then they're actually just buffing you. So, you know, we make this companion build fantasy, but it's actually just making the player better. And then on the power side, you know, you're just putting, you're basically just slotting three skills on your bar with your companions, and then not really caring about buffing them or using them, because they're just kind of there as proxies to make you better. So we've changed it now where, you know, basically it's going to be about the companions. So... Your companion skills are all are just going to deal damage for every companion that you have. So you know the the bigger your zoo, the better your zoo is going to perform. And to compensate players, we're doing some pretty massive buffs to druid skills baseline to compensate. So you know your skills are just going to be do, getting that damage baseline, and in many cases a little bit more. Yeah. So you can uh, check that out when you see the PTR notes uh, or the, yeah the PTR patch notes after this. Um, but we basically just buffed everything across the board and made it so that shepherds isn't required anymore. Next, for the Sorceress, uh, this is Axial Conduit. I'm really excited about this unique. Um, this is your Chain Lightning unique. So Chain Lightning builds. You finally have a unique that really talks to you. And you can see here kind of our stats and that new philosophy I told you about. Um, you have chance to double cast Chain Lightning on pants instead of just a weapon. So that's pretty cool. Um, so basically, the way that this works, we're going to have a video, but I'm going to explain to you how this works because it actually changes your skill pretty significantly. So now when you cast Chain Lightning, the way it's going to work is, is it's, going to, it's going to cast and bounce on enemies just like before, but then it's going to come back to you and orbit you a little bit. And then it's going to go out and hit another enemy, and then come back to you and orbit, and then come out and then go out and do another enemy and come back. And it's going to do that back and forth a few times. And every time it comes back to you, it's going to drain some of your mana. And after it drains so much mana, after coming back 10 times, the bolt is actually going to explode for a ridiculous amount of lightning damage on enemies. So there's a mini game here where basically... Um, oh, and by the way, you can cast multiple Chain Lightnings when this is out. You're basically going to be like running a gambit here, and the mini game is you want to stack as much resource regeneration as you can so that your Lightning Bolts can survive so far, being drained over and over clean, and bouncing man. everywhere so they can last to their explosion and do a ton of damage to enemies. Uh, one thing I want to call out here also is that because it drains mana, uh, resource cost reduction won't work on that drain. You're actually going to want to focus on gaining resource uh, which is a little bit different and kind of makes this build a little special, I think, and unique compared to other uh, I mean, resources. The pants come with 31 and a half builds based around resource, resource generation. So, so I like yeah. see it in action here. You'll, so you'll see what one cast looks like, and then I'll think we'll see what it looks like when you spam it. So you can see here, it circles you, goes and hits enemies, circles you, goes and hits enemies, and then it does a big explosion at the end that we've tuned the damage to be pretty high. See there? So then it explodes. So Oh, wait. Oh, do we have one where it casts a bunch of times? Maybe we don't. Oh. Oh, there, there we go. go. There yeah, we go. There yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So see here, you can see that you know as you go, it's like it'll keep going, 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 and then explode a bunch of times. Another thing I want to point out is if you're hugging enemies in melee range, as it's circling you, it will also hit enemies. So you now have a way to like really maximize your damage by hugging bosses and such. Uh, the damage goes way up. So next, last but not least, the necromancer. Uh, so we got some feedback. We've had this for a while and felt this on the team where you know. The golem we really love. You know, we love our golem, our golem boys. No more and, billions. You know, on but the sometimes golem it can punch? be frustrating where you tell the golem to go somewhere, and then he kind of takes a while to lug his butt over there and do his slam or his shout or whatever, and you know things can get in the way. Um, and so we we've kind of upgraded him a little bit. I'll let the video speak for himself here. But so now you can see uh, your golem will Hulk smash and just jump on enemies and <laughs> slam them down. So. Uh, this will work with all of your golem types, by the way, not just the iron golem, but now your golem is going to leap to the area that you tell him to go and then cast its ability. So we're really excited about this. Uh, shout out to Charles Dunn, who got this, uh, who got this change in, and our animators who helped us out. Uh, but we're, we're really pumped for it. It looks amazing. Um, yeah, so th those were the, uh, the the class and balance changes, and <laughs> I know we, we jumped a slide there. How dare you, so production? Good. No, uh, but we are, <laughs> as they wave to me, like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, we do want to go into some quality of life updates. We do have a, a significant amount of quality of life updates sure that do. we do yeah. want to go through. 
that will be available in uh, Season 5. And you guys will actually be able to check this out in the PTR. So now we can go to the next <laughs> slide, uh, where we do want to talk about some Helltide and Whisper updates specifically. Um, so I know this has been kind of a, at least it's been a pain point for me and I've heard uh, it's been a pain point for others is that as you guys are going through Helltide, there are Whisper objectives within there to help you with yep. your uh, progression on your Whisper bar. But the uh, issue with the ones in Helltide is that it can sometimes take quite a while to yep. do. Um, and, you know, you can, you sometimes players would have to leave the Helltide to go to another area to complete some of these Whisper objectives. Yep. So we are optimizing this to ensure that they don't take nearly as much time. Uh, the, the ideal goal is to get a Yo, bunch of value within that, those 15 minutes um, uh, to end to potentially end up getting a full entire Whisper 10-point uh, uh, bar within oh, 15 minutes so on, in so one Helltide zone. you can do a full zone. Whisper every Helltide. Yeah, so that would be, it, it'll be a, a huge help because I'll, I know... Uh, at least for me, I've always had to like kind of leave a hell tide yep. and like kind of tr try nope. to you know knock some of that I out. Think we're, well, especially help for players that are looking for additional gold because whisper caches have always been yep. great don't sources know what of it can gold. Do. And now, so, as Adam mentioned, you can as also much use as I want to jump on it, uh, uh, target farm. Say, yeah, so, ooh, so it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's keeping Can't things uh, uh, more optimized for players, which we know will be way better there. The next thing we do want to talk about is also baneful hearts. I know in uh, this may not sound like a huge quality of life thing or a buff of, of any sort, but we have noticed that and uh, players have had a lot of baneful hearts uh, within their inventory. We do want to make these uh, a little bit more valuable so they won't drop as frequently. We know that players will still have a significant amount, but maybe not hundreds and hundreds like some people yeah, have rough, uh, within their inventory. Like but uh, players should not have any type of issues uh, regarding having class, a ton of these painful hearts. Seen. But we are tweaking the, the drop rate because they were dropping a little too much there. Right. Should have been too... Should have Tempering. Been too, yeah. The, the, oh, the, the, <laughs> the very, very, uh, uh, I guess, like, brought up topic. Well, and like... Yeah, people like very, talking about yeah, tempering. It's... Like, it's Pretty popular. Yeah, so I want to take a minute to talk about tempering and kind of how the design team sees it and kind of what we're happy with, what we think could be better, and, and some adjustments we'll be making in Season 5. So first high level, kind of how we see tempering. Um, we really think that it's important that items have an endpoint where players know kind of that the item is done and that they're not hoarding lots of them forever on the chance that RNG they can all be good. Right? Out of the players hands. One of the big key goals. So are they going to do what we said? Are they going to give us multiple options each time we temper? Stash space. And while we know that you know bricking an item never feels great, we do need that to be something that's possible to do in the game so that you know when the journey is done and you're not just holding on to an item forever. So that part we actually think is working very well, where you know an item is done and you try and go get another one, and so you're always interested in items and trying to you know get, have that game loop go for in the game indefinitely, um, or until you feel like your character is is maxed out on its power. Um, but we do agree with players that you know the RNG right now is like completely out of their hands, which doesn't really feel great. You know you get you get so many tries basically to roll, and then that's kind of it, and you're done, and it doesn't feel great. No chat. So we're looking at ways um, in the future for the players to have more control me over that RNG, so that you know you have if more ways would to maybe manipulate tap real the tempering quick, that would or get the odds help, in your though. favor, um, and do other things like that. Um, one update Thanks that's going to be coming this in kind season of five. Uh, yep. It won't be in the PTR, but is we're targeting Thanks, for Dustin. launch. Is that you know, we've got a lot of feedback that it Thank feels so see. bad when, you know, you get that, like, triple greater affix and it has the same number of rolls and then you, you, you brick it and then you have to try and go get another one. So in Season 5, to help with this, you know, as your item gets better, basically, that you find, you're going to have more chances to temper it. So a, a much better chance to get the one that you want. Um, basically, the way it'll work is you're going to basically get one extra roll per greater affix that you have. So, you know, yeah. you have one greater affix, one roll, three, three rolls. And again, just to clarify, this is not in the PTR, but yeah. it will be in for the uh, the launch of Season 5 in itself. And I, again, just to reiterate, we are still looking at ways uh, to to help out that experience with bin tempering, yeah. as we've noted. We, we agree with players that it doesn't always feel great. And so um, you guys should expect to hear more updates to tempering uh, after we get through Season 5 for sure. Yeah. All right. Next up, bro. All weapons. I know is by October eighth, yeah, so this shit better be made. A little bit. Uh, we took a look, look at this in, chart. <laughs> yeah, this chart. Uh, we took a look at inherent affixes on weapons, and we found that you know a lot of inherent affixes, like damage to distant or some other ones, were, were a little too conditional and didn't get the update you know in season four that we wanted. So we bro, went back allow, and made them a little uh, bit more generically useful to appear on the and, and better across more randomly. builds. So we have a little chart here, if but you can see kind of. 
This is gonna be the new inherent affixes on all the different weapon types. So we've made quite a few adjustments here. You know, as an example, you know, vulnerable damage is on uh, bows and dot damage is on axes, which I, I believe vulnerable on bows is new. But yeah, so we made quite a few updates. Mm -hmm. We basically just looked at the matrix of everything and kind of adjusted it to see but what that's makes sense. Anyway. So basically you're just gonna have, you know, things that actually impact your builds much more often on the weapons that, that you want. And as another result of this update, we are also looking at what weapons classes can use. And we updated them a little bit to try and, you know, let more classes use more weapons. We want players to be able to create interesting builds, play the way that we want. And so we want to open up these things as much as we can in our designs. So now druids are going to be able to use two-hand pull arms, my bar, bar, bar. swords, and daggers. Uh, sorceresses are going to be able to use one-hand swords and maces. And necromancers are going to be able to use, I think it's so, uh, course, maces and axes, actually. Yeah. Despite you this that. necromancer no, picture right <laughs> here that is not using... <laughs> well, yeah, it's using a two-handed sword, but you can already use a two-handed sword, exactly. but not using a... And, uh, it, yeah, and the, the necromancer here, I know it's supposed to say all maces and axes yeah. as opposed to all swords, so... Um, but yeah, basically we're going to be like opening up these classes to use more weapon types. Um, and then also some of the uniques are going to be updated for the classes as well. So the Butcher's Cleaver can now be used for Necros, uh, and Sorcerers can use Doombreener and Azure Wrath now. Yeah, Sorcerers can use uh, uh, Azure Wrath, kind of like D2. Yeah, yep. that's pretty nice. Theme very well too, so I think that'll be pretty cool. Bro, the barb with the bow would be fire, wouldn't it? They don't um, some care additional about quality of life updates. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about some end game bosses. As I have experienced, as Adam has experienced earlier, Thank as he God. mentioned in the stream, we are making changes to the Beast and Ice. Um, you guys will no longer have to make a sigil to summon the Beast and Ice, which is a uh, huge quality of life update. Uh, it, the Beast will now live in a standard dungeon. Uh, the crawl to get to the Beast and Ice is much, much shorter now. It's going to be Thank more you. similar to what we've seen with uh, some of the, the other endgame bosses. Uh, and then at the same time, eternal players that have maybe uh, already built out some of these sigils, we made sure to keep you in mind so you can still use the sigils to fight the boss. You won't just uh, you won't need summoning materials. You can just use the sigil right there uh, mm -hmm. in the, uh, the the boss room in itself. And uh, this no longer mm -hmm. requires sigil dust to actually summon the beast and ice. So some big changes to the beast and ice to help out that uh, that whole entire feel. Uh, I really didn't understand how they said really they're hoping target farming the beast and ice. Uh, sometimes it was kind of. Uh, brutal to have they to just go said through the we're whole entire dungeon each and every time. They say yeah. that a lot. So many times. Yeah. So uh, next I got we you have on hardcore, uh, bro. Varshan. I got Varshan. Um, the body parts are pretty much being reduced to one. Um, I know it was eating up a lot of inventory God. space. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of hard to manage at times and everything. So we're optimizing this, making this better. So now you'll just need one body part to essentially uh, summon Varshan uh, going forward, uh, starting with season Because we five. needed only steel, you know what I'm saying? And yo, I'm uh, dead ass. I do big play thing hardcore, that we're call and I main bar. This is kind of I'm like pretty the, sure I got the cherry it. on top. Mm -hmm. uh, we should let's actually just play the clip and see if people actually notice it. And if not, then I'll, we'll call what it out. What could be different this time? Poor Duriel. Yeah, mythic unique maybe. Oh no, that's not oh. it. Oh, the double good gear though. Yeah, but yeah. something unique. that is interesting here is the cauldron oh, has reappeared oh you can just they reset. Yeah, thank the you right there you bro that was so trash the dude game bosses reset in the dungeon over and dungeon. over again let's reset, go reset the go dungeon quality so of life for real a lot will make things way better in terms of like yo those rotations done in 10 minutes time and everything yeah especially when you're a party and you're like everyone leave the dungeon so i can reset and stuff like that uh now you'll be able to do that immediately uh, for all the end game bosses, which is a Super huge, convenient. huge feature yep. I know that players have been asking for. Um, so that will be also incorporated they be into listening. season I five. I can't not, yo, so I'd be so tight. Lots and lots of but changes they kinda do for listen. season five. Um, yeah, make that update other thing, um, yesterday, I did want to call out regarding tempering because, uh, just to clarify, because we've, we've got some people going like, oh, I don't understand like the greater affix stuff like mm -hmm. in terms of additional roles. If you have a one-star greater affix, you'll get one additional role. If you have like a three-star or four-star or something, you would get three or four, pending the, the amount of stars that you actually specifically have on your uh, your item. Yeah, I think um, it goes up to three. Yeah, three, 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 sorry. Yeah, four, yeah. Four, four, four is more specific. Is unique, four is, four is unique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if I'm thinking about <laughs> razor plate or something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. But... 
Uh, the other thing that I did want to call out is that this is actually going to be retroactive. So uh, for, for players that still have maybe an item that they may have uh, potentially bricked and it's sitting in their stash, August. you know, just for like season five will purposes. come out in August. <laughs> right. yeah, that, but you'll yeah, be able to when do your character PTR does move soon. to Eternal, um, if it was a greater affix, like a three-star greater affix or something like that, uh, you will uh, end up getting those three additional rolls uh, afterwards. Mm -hmm. So uh, that will appear after these changes actually are implemented with the start of season five. It'll just be on your internal character, obviously, because your seasonal character will move to Eternal. Yeah. Um, as I fix my earpiece, <laughs> that's like falling out. Oh, no. um, <laughs> but uh, one other thing I did want to call out as well for Season 5, um, we have some really uh, big like accessibility options that uh, are being added to the actual game, and we really, really need no. some testing on this in the Season 5 PTR. This is actually called out in our blog. We would really love if players can actually check them out, test them out, provide feedback. I will note, we aren't planning, despite it being in the Season 5 PTR, we aren't planning on these features actually launching with Season 5. We really want to take the feedback, make them, you know, better for, for when they are ready. And right now, I think that the plan would be that How they would be ready for season six. How can we give you feedback if we don't six, use but it? But it's important for us to be able to get that feedback. So we really need people to, to actually test, test, test out these, uh, <laughs> these um, specific uh, features. We have like an auto pin feature. We have a compass feature. Uh, and then we have like an audio uh, navigation assistance feature that is coming within uh, some of these accessibility features for season five. So really important for people to kind of like jump in check it out, uh, give us feedback, and then you'll see those in uh, season six uh, after the PTR is kind cool. of over. Um, Bro, but I hope nobody's That is kind of like a, a huge wrap-up of all the stuff yeah. that is coming for uh, the season five PTR and even a little bit more of even e even some of the stuff bit, for yeah. season so five So basically, itself. they're hoping all this stuff um, We do want to take some questions, and we still have Dan hatred. on the line. Um, from the burning hells of Albany uh, <laughs> he, to, to answer any questions that we may have. But I know we have a question specifically teed up. So if you have questions, please ask them in uh, Twitch chat, uh, which is where we have live chat going on right now. And we will try to get through as many as possible. Cool. But first question I believe we have is, ha, ah, because I teed up this question. Um, <laughs> Are there any new class buffs coming to season five? Specifically, <laughs> if Adam can answer. Right, no, that's Druid different. and Sorceress. Because I know, <laughs> we hear you, <laughs> everyone, <laughs> about <laughs> Druid and Sorceress. I know we talked a little bit about it here, but if you can, like, expand on it a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I know what yes, you mean, dude. There are new and it feels like they don't even play the game. Covered a little bit. Um, I think one they call out that people talk a lot about right now is, you know, how... Barbarians in particular are pretty strong, and then you know the the classes nah, that can't get as far as they can in the pit, you know, feels kind of bad. Um, there's there's a lot to chew on there, but I think the the short answer is yes, we hear you, and we're gonna be looking to beef things these things up. Um, we do have some specific right. ways Barbara's that we want to be targeting weak, these things. Need the buff. I mean, there's a lot of history to it. Um, barbarians in particular are are tougher to balance. I think I've talked about this on stream a little bit before. Of you know. Because of their arsenal system, they have more items. You know, any time that we mess with, and we've messed with, like, the underlying systems of the game very heavily in the last year, right? Season 2, we updated all the combat math, which, of course, impacts items, which impacts character power. We've uh, updated in Season 4 all of itemization, which exactly, obviously directly pity. impacts the arsenal just system bad. heavily. That's so facts. when we do these large shakeups, um, it's, it's, way more, it's a lot more difficult in a short amount of time to get everything, you know, exactly perfect of how it the the combinatorics of those effects are going to impact classes, right? Um, so that's one end of it. Another end is what we're trying to do, and we started this with started with this in season four. Is we were we're looking at the other class mechanics, and we want to kind of beef them up and give them the treatment that we kind of gave with the necromancer in the Book of the Dead. You know, in season four, we actually wanted to try this as an experiment, like, hey, you know, the Book of the Dead, the minions, the sacrifice bonuses. Um, they're what really make Necromancer feel really cool and special and unique. So we're going to, you know, try and catch that up, so to speak, to the arsenal system on the Barbarian. And not only just increase the numbers, right? Because just increasing the numbers is kind of easy. We even did that in the mid-season patch. If you look at the Druid Boons, you know, just we do increased it. them by 50%, doubled them in many cases. That's right, JM. But we think just that really helps solve it. that on the fantasy you don't try. and even just uh, design perspective. We want to, like, overhaul and really look at these mechanics and make them way better and more thematic to classes. So we don't have anything to announce today for Season 5, 
but that's something more long term that we're doing to, to help that problem in the future. So in the short zero term, we are buffs? you know looking at you know fixing the issues with these various classes, buffing them up in different ways, you know making different builds and other things viable, and trying to keep that parity. Um, we're also he looking just at, said they're uh, not doing you know, any bringing buffs, down the outliers and then just said the they're looking into ways, doing buffs um, to make sure that Get they have more parity with other classes as well. Yo, Rel, thanks but for that's the kind of our, our short and long term vision of where we want this to be. Awesome. Um, I know uh, we have Look, a question specifically, <laughs> and this is something I've seen a, a few times regarding uh, season five for for uh, Dan because Infernal Hordes people are seeing this gameplay and they're hearing about like okay like I can play can I play this on Eternal and seasonal? Well, they even can, even uh, I play the this? New class. Is this like an ongoing thing going forward? Like what what can players? I don't expecting? know. I was hoping they would, <laughs> but probably not. Sure. Yeah. So. With season five, because um, that new character doesn't out, get released till season uh, the end six, game. and because we're building out the end game, we wanted to make sure that any of the end game things we're putting in are on both seasonal and eternal. And so, uh, in this PTR, you'll be able to test out the eternal version of Infernal Hordes, and so uh, any of the rewards you get from it, all that's eternal. So all players are going to benefit from it. Awesome. Yeah, so all players will benefit from it, and it's and as Dan mentioned, it's a it's a, a new end game feature. So it's like something that will be you know continuous beyond you know even season five is what we're looking at. So um, yeah, players can expect to jump in Infernal Hordes going forward, which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, and yeah, the feedback is going to be incredibly important during this PTR, as Dan mentioned beforehand. All this I don't think we should be able uh, to items unbreak that items. We're really hoping to get you know. Uh, I just think we on, should have more uh, options when, you know, when tempering. The boons and it feel, seems how like the, they're doing the rewards that. feel, how yeah. the, the the combat feels, and the waves and stuff like that will be uh, really important for us during this specific moment. Um, <coughs> what is the? Uh, this is another season five question. Yeah, I, mean, I think they need to give us three to three choices, um, and at least is, allow us to Lucky keep Luciano. the old one. And I'm okay Shout if it's still partner. bricks. Uh, what is the equivalent pit level of the eighth difficulty of like the Infernal Hordes? Pit level, I guess, or nightmare dungeon, level. or or monster uh, level. Yeah, you're making me do math here. Um, <laughs> yeah, we just adjusted pit levels. Yeah, too, so, so tier tier eight tier eight of the infernal <clears throat> hordes is going to be uh, equivalent to about monster level. I think it's 180 to 200. So it goes up Damn. pretty high. That's pretty late. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So. A difficult challenge for sure, um, which is good to hear. Uh, we have a question from uh, Zapados. <laughs> Man, y'all need easier names, I swear. Uh, Pokemon Zapados? Uh, do you foresee changes in grouping in the pit to allow uh, group play to be more efficient? Um, there will be changes. It won't be something present in PTR. <laughs> uh, we'll talk more about it at the Season 5 launch, but... The team is very aware of it um, because we've heard about like, hey, it's kind of they nerfed not all great CC to feel like I'm getting on like 50% elites, of you know the rewards associated yep. when I'm in it a group. It will happen within less, a, and uh, you can now the, uh, hit potions specifically. even if you're stunned. so. Uh, it's uh, something that the team's taking in, and we will uh, have an update for players before season five, and it will be live. Whatever change we have uh, live in season five. So, um, a question from, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. It will okay. happen Robot to Jomo. us uh, What's less. the team's philosophy on Not uh, how rated much power gain? CC uh, it seems that tempering, especially pl uh, players, gain too much power too quickly, really removing the tension from the leveling up experience. Any chance to add more friction uh, to tempering, materials, costs, etc.? Yeah. Uh, we have seen a little bit of this and heard this feedback ourselves. Um, it's kind of going in two different ways here. So the leveling experience, then how tempering messes with it, right? Um, the leveling experience, as people probably have seen, has been sped up quite a bit, right? We do want people Hell to be yeah, able to kind of level quickly like and get to the, the fun Brett? of the game as quickly as possible. So we do want them, you know, we don't want there to be a ton of friction. Like, you know, when we first launched the game, we, we had the idea that, like, getting to level 100 alone was a big accomplishment, right? Um, I get CC this my life. we've learned that, you know, players really want to, like, <laughs> fulfill their power fantasies, gotcha. get to the part where they're actually, like, incrementally increasing their character's power and finding things to use that power against. And so they, they enjoy that endgame a lot, and we want to get them there in a reasonable amount of time. So that's the part that is like, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, it's fine. Level quicker. It's good, right? But then the other part is, like, tempering and kind of Panic the tuning of the affixes. Um, we have heard the feedback and, and kind of agree with it that, you know, the early tempering recipes are, are really, really strong. <laughs> 
right? Um, that was by design when we launched season four. Uh, one of the big kind of mandates to the team that we felt was important was we wanted, you know, before season four, we constantly got the feedback and, and knew it was true that, you know, your item stats weren't interesting enough and didn't matter enough and weren't very impactful and didn't, just didn't feel good, right? And so we, we very much, like, juiced them up to be very strong. And then this new tempering system that manipulates them, we made it very strong so that out the gate, our goal was that when you temper an item, you can really feel the damage. It wasn't like this incremental, oh, my damage goes up in, like, 10 different places here and there, and now I'm strong. It was like, no, this one thing happened, and you felt it, and it was good. And so we're going to, you know, try and walk that line. We're going to probably go a little more in between here where, you know, we do agree that the tempering is warping the early game experience too much to the point that it's like, you pick up an item and you don't care about the stats because you just temper something on and it's like way better, right? So we don't want that, but we do still want them to feel and be really impactful. So we have heard the feedback. Um, I don't remember, don't think we have huge adjustments good. in season five right away, but we are going to be looking at that leveling process and, and streaming lining that quite a bit. Um, we're having time actually in talks about that right now with various members of the team. So it will be looked at. Uh, not tons will change in season five though. Awesome. Yep. Pity my uh, question from Razzle, Dazzle, Dazzle, Razzle Daris. Dazzle Daris. Razzle Dazzle Daris. Yo, it's a Mark, long name follow, to log man. in on. Uh, did you say we can temper uniques? Uh, are you open to letting us imprint affixes? I had this thought we can imprint a unique, good, but Zach? only once. Yeah, uh, going back, that was kind of what I talked about with the unique section. We right now know, I'm not going to say never in the future. It's Yo, definitely y'all literally just said it in your we'll slide, bro. Uniques, um, but we... We want them to have an identity that is very different from legendaries. Uh, one of the concerns. Well, with not that, that you could temper. The it. They just said that manipulation. The, the, the things that, that you would temper on two-handed weapons. Color when they drop on the ground, up. right? Like they're actually not different in how they work. If we were able to manip manipulate true. stats, add stats, all those things. So we do want them to have a different identity in the game. Um, so we're not doing it now, but you know, in the future, we've talked about it. We're we're open to the idea, but we do want to try this first of like double down you know what makes a unique unique and that you build around it it's a little there's a little bit of friction um rather than just turning it into the item that you want every time yep uh question from barrack is uh hey adam or adams um <laughs> i have a question for uh, the q a how is the dev team feeling about the reception of season four is that making them rethink any plans for future seasons mm -hmm. i mean i think one thing that we can most definitely call out here is like obviously season four has been really great like we've been he hearing a lot of great feedback from players um, and, you know, we're very well aware of, like, you know, how everyone's been enjoying it. Um, I think one huge thing that's helped with that as well was, like, the idea that we had a PTR for Season 4, mm -hmm. and now we're seeing that again for Season 5. Um, so, like, we, we know, like, having that moment where players can actually jump in, provide feedback, uh, give us some, some notes on specific things is really beneficial, especially when we have, like, new huge features like what we did for Season 4, which was, you know, obviously tempering, masterworking, uh, the pit, uh, all new hell tides. There was a ton of new features. And then, of course, with Season 5, you know, players are now going to be able to run through Infernal Horde, yep. uh, tons of new gear, uh, and, and uh, legendary aspects for them. So it's just like a ton of stuff that we know that we can most definitely take feedback on. Yeah, Having those moments mean, has bro. really helped us with some of those decisions. Yeah, I would say on, on the design team side, I know like the people on the team are very happy with how Season 4 went. It, it couldn't have gone better, really, in our eyes. Well, Heartseeker um, Rogue. PTR was a huge deal. Ground, um, helped us a lot, especially well, on the balance nerfed. and it was the design side to you know, get things into a better place. Um, another thing I may call out with Season 4 is that, uh, maybe how I phrase it, like, you know, there's been a lot of disruption to the game, right? And so it's, when there's that much disruption of like, you know, we update all the core math and all the items and everything, you know, it's very difficult to get things into a fine-tuned state, right? And, you know, without giving anything away, we have big updates coming in the future with, you know, expansion and other things. But one of the things that we're, we're looking forward to, I think, as a team is when we've kind of uh, settled down a little bit on the big disruptions, like overhauling you know, all of itemization and things like that. Because, um, you know, it becomes a lot more yeah, difficult to fine-tune things like balance like or even the on the design side, though. like designs and making sure that they work and that we're, like, like range of it. Iter uh, iterating and upgrading things versus, you know, changing things around in huge ways. So while we think it was really successful and we're happy with how itemization 2.0 turned out, um, the team is looking forward to, like, making the things as they are and make them work better and, and more do fine-tuning work. And so I think you can expect in the future as a player... 
um, you know, after we've done yep. some more disruption and made the game like in a really good place, we're very happy with it, which we're really close to now, I think. Um, that you're, you know, you have tighter they class balance, about tighter designs, tighter roles for things, and just, you know, the one of the things that excites me and excited the team about season four was like the tons of quality of life improvements yeah, and how much of an impact that makes on players, which I think we knew, but it hit home in season four, right? Like just the codex of power, how that changed and how that completely fixed you know the hoarding of items and things like that i think are, are what really jazz us a lot because it just makes that flow but just a heads better, up like this is not ladder, all of you know, being the patches able to but the stuff patch like that, notes I think is will really be impactful. live right after um, the and campfire. good for for the longevity of the game so we're excited to do more things like that all right uh last question that we have here uh is uh sate well, it's just Satan's. Oh, Satan, right. Satan's with a Z and six 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 afterwards. Very, <laughs> very good theme. Diablo. Yeah, perfect. very Diablo theme. Is specifically asking, uh, what is the seasonal theme? Um, are, are we like holding back any information right now regarding that and stuff? Uh, Dan, I don't know if you want to clarify <clears throat> here or if you want me to. You can. All right. So. Um... We haven't announced the name for the season yet. Uh, as far I might as go I over know, the patch notes. The, the seasonal theme. But the chat thinks seems, I should. I guess fairly obvious. Um, you know, we're going back to hell, and so uh, the theme is pretty much returning to hell. And while the infernal hordes is uh, just one part of that, uh, the rewards are another part. And uh, when we have our, our season five live stream, uh, we'll go into all of the rest of the things that we have planned for season five. Exactly. Yeah, we have uh, we Sorry. have some yeah we have some we have some additional <laughs> stuff uh, yeah. to to talk about when we we do actually have our season five live stream. We're just uh, right now the biggest focus for this stream is for people to hear about the content that they're going to be able to play in PTR, um, and we want people to really hone in and focus in on that. Uh, so we can actually get that feedback uh, for the team here, and we can make any changes that we may need to. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that is kind of uh, going to wrap this up for today for for Q and A. Um, By the way, guys, I, I don't want to hear like that stuff is too sure, easy sure chat will kill me or if boring. If you're sure, not playing on hardcore, uh, it if is, you're not again, playing on hardcore, that we that's not even well how of, Diablo is designed to be played, bro. Takes a so, lot of time. It's a huge that huge, automatically uh, is going to remove uh, overhaul changes and everything from that end. Uh, <laughs> Half separately, of what's uh, we uh, <laughs> this isn't coming up a lot. Auction house. Mm -hmm. There are currently no plans right now for for something like that. But uh, we we hear you guys. We 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 <laughs> feedback things like that. All right. That. So Let season eight, they'll have um, auction but house. But right now, those are those are the two big That's things. That I, I, I've been sure. seeing a ton in chat. I just want to address them before people go like. You're not reading chat. We're, <laughs> yeah. what, you're, you're in some like alternate universe <laughs> chat or something like that. Um, but uh, PTR again, just to remind hey, everyone, starts next Tesday. Yep. Uh, it runs for one week. It's on PC Battle.net only. Please provide feedback on our forums, Reddit, social media, our community Discord, things like that. Uh, we're always looking around. Uh, we really are. We really value the feedback that we get during these PTR processes. And of course. Uh, at the same time, we patch notes on the blog are live yeah. immediately after this stream. So check out Diablo4.com when those do get up. Uh, no, but it next makes time it more you guys challenging. Us, next time we stream. It's I'm July saying that you can't 18th. say the game's too easy. It's the Spirit Born reveal. If you're not Ooh. even playing on yeah, the difficulty designed the, uh, to make the, it hard. The, the Spirit Born. So we'll be back live on stream on July 18th. We'll be revealing... The and brand new class coming to losing Diablo everything uh, itself part of of does not make the game so fun. Really excited but about it that. does and, add uh, yeah, more appreciation when you get to a certain level. I want to give a, a huge shout out to Dan and Albany. Yeah, thank Stay you, cool, Dan. Dan. Yeah, it's a different type Enjoy of accomplishment. The, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the burning fire and, under him. Yeah, I know, I exactly. I don't want to hear those guys no more. All right, let's see if I can. Uh, Get these patch notes. You think you think they're not up yet? You guys think the notes are just simply not up yet? So I'm starting to think that.
Yeah, because these last patch notes were from the 14th. How long you guys think we got to wait <laughs> before it pops up? But what I miss. Uh, but yeah, I, I promise you, man, it's a completely different game on hardcore. And if the game's too easy, then I definitely suggest you play it on hardcore so you can see how the game was only easy because you were playing on casual. All right, let's see. Yeah, see, it doesn't have it yet. Bro, why are they so slow? Uh, and uh, thank you yeah. again. Okay, so so the live stream is definitely all the way over. So where's my patch notes? You looking too, see? Nah, you don't keep you don't keep any of that stuff. You always restart. Now Yes, in hardcore you do, if that's what you mean. When you die on hardcore, do you, yeah, okay, no. You keep any aspects that you found throughout your entire playthrough, right? So that's one reason that it's a little bit better. But before, you used to have a death pot that would protect you so that, you know, if you got one death, you would be okay. But that's gone, you know? That's gone now. Uh, but, yo, guys, I'm not seeing the patch notes, so I'm just... Oh, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, nah. Wait, hold up. June 17th. Let's see here. Nah, we already, we already seen all this. What am I talking about? We already seen all this. All right, y'all. I'll catch y'all later, man. We'll see uh, if they come on later, then we'll go over it. But until then, you guys uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Peace out. Uh, what was the complaint? Hmm. All right, y'all. Peace out, guys.